Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving an exponential system of equations. We have x to the power y plus 1 equals 4 and x to the power 1 minus y equals x minus 1 and we're going to be solving for x and y values. And I'll be presenting two methods. Let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and isolate x to the power y from each of these equations. Let's write this as x to the y times x equals 4. And then as long as x does not equal 0, I can write x to the y as 4 over x. And if you check this out, like x equals 0 is not going to satisfy the system. So I could write x to the y as this. And I can do the same thing with the second equation. Let's go ahead and isolate it. x to the power 1 minus y equals x minus 1. And here because the exponents were subtracted using the laws of exponents, we can write this as a quotient. Let's write this as a quotient. So x to the first power divided by x to the y equals x minus 1. And then x to the power 1 is just x. And we can isolate, since these are being multiplied, we can kind of switch them around and write the x to the y as x over x minus 1. So we got two different values for x to the power y. This is one of them, and the other one is 4 to the 4 over x, right? Since both of these expressions are equal to the same thing, they have to be equal, right? That's the general principle. So these two things are equal. Let's set them equal to each other. x over x minus 1 equals 4 over x. And this is going to give us a rational equation. We have to be careful about certain values such as x cannot be 0, x cannot be 1, so on and so forth. Let's cross multiply under those conditions. We get x squared equals 4x minus 4. Let's put everything on the same side. And guess what? We do get a perfect square. This is x minus 2 squared equals 0 and from here we get a single solution which is x equals 2. So we got one value for x. Do you think we're going to get a single value for y as well? Let's go take a look at our formula. Which one? Doesn't matter which one you use. I'll, I'll use the second one. x to the y equals 4 over x. Same thing. Doesn't matter. Now replace x with 2. This is going to give you 2 to the power y equals 4 divided by 2 which is 2 and from here y equals 1 should be a solution. That corresponds to x equals 2, right? So it looks like 2 comma 1 is going to satisfy this system. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. And the second method is actually going to explore a little further because I'm also going to be checking complex solutions. Okay, great. So let's rewrite our system x to the power y plus 1 equals 4 and x to the power of 1 minus y equals x minus 1. Pretty much the same thing, but I'll just uh, approach this problem a little differently. Okay, now instead of isolating x to the y, we can do the following. Multiply these equations. And the motivation behind it is the fact that when I do, I'm supposed to add the exponents, right? When you multiply two powers with the same base, you add the exponents, but guess what? The exponents cancel out. So y cancels out. You know why, hopefully. And then we end up with x squared equals 4x minus 4. Now this time, let's just do things a little differently and use the quadratic formula to solve for x. And then we're going to look at the y value, but we're going to keep our options open and check for complex, non-real solutions if there are any. Okay? Now, if you use the quadratic formula, you get negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which is 16 minus 16, and that's equal to 0. So this is 0, and you get x equals 2 as before. The only real solution for x. Okay? Now, here's a good question that I want to raise. Uh, is Are there complex solutions for x, something to think about, but I'm going to go ahead and check out what happens with the y values. As before, we can pretty much replace x with 2 in one of these equations. If you want, let's use the second one, no big deal. If you replace x with 2, you get 2 to the power 1 minus y equals 2 minus 1, which is 1. And this is 2 over 2 to the y equals 1, and from here you get 2 to the y equals 2. 
Now, with the first approach, notice that we got the same thing, but we didn't really dig further, dig deeper to check for complex solution. But we're going to do it now. Okay, how do you complexify this? Let's go ahead and complexify this equation. I think that that expression belongs to either Chris Jurovich or uh, Professor Nandor. I can't remember exactly. Um, correct me if I'm... Um, whoever came up with this idea. Okay, anyways. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace, hmm, let's see. I can replace 2 with e to the power ln 2. And the motivation behind it is I want to write everything using Euler's formula. What is Euler's formula? Euler's formula says any complex number can be written as r times e to the power i theta, right? r is the modulus or the absolute value, and theta is the angle or the argument. And in our lecture videos at a plus bi, uh, we talked about all these things. Commercial break, let's get back to the problem. Okay, so if you replace 2 with that, and are we going to do it uh, for both of these? No, we're only going to do it on the left-hand side. You'll see why we're not doing it. Well, I guess you could do it, but I'm only going to do it here. So replace 2 with e to the ln 2, and then raise it to the power y. And here, I'm going to write the 2 as 2 times 1, and I'm going to change the y. Uh, the 1, not the y. Uh, so this becomes e to the power y ln 2. And now I can write the 1 as e to the power 2 pi n i. That's how you can complexify a real number. Why? Because if you think about it, 1 is a real number. It's on the real axis, no imaginary parts. Therefore, its argument or angle is just going to be 0 radians or pi, 2 pi radians or multiples of 2 pi radians. Make sense? And I'm just using 2 pi n i, n is an integer, which represents all multiples of 2 pi. Okay? So what do you do with this type of equation? Again, you can uh, replace 2 with e to the ln 2 if you want. Let's do it. e to the power y ln 2 equals e to the power ln 2 times. But since when uh, multiplication gives us addition of exponents, we can just write it like this. Make sense? I hope, I hope this wasn't too fast. And now let's go ahead and set the exponents equal to each other and look for y values. Now you can go ahead and just divide both sides. So let's see, ln 2 plus 2 and pi i, 2 pi n i. And I'm going to go ahead and divide everything by ln 2. That's going to give me ln 2 divided by ln 2 plus 2 pi n divided by ln 2 multiplied by i. Now with this, I get a complex solution for y, and guess what happens if n is equal to 0? We get y equals 1. Because this is 1, so the general solution can actually be written as 1 plus 2 pi n divided by ln 2 multiplied by i. And as you know, this is a complex number in standard form a plus bi. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.